In this video, we're going to do an overview of the structure and function of the penis. What a lot of people don't realize is that 50% of the penis is actually internal, what we call the root of the penis, and it's attached to several different skeletal muscles. These are skeletal muscles that make up the pelvic floor. So a lot of these muscles are found in both the male and the female. They just have different functions in the different sexes. The remaining 50% of the penis is external and it's referred to as the shaft. Don't forget that in anatomical position, the shaft of the penis is erect. And this is important because when it comes to studying certain parts of the penis, we're gonna use the terms dorsal and ventral and it will be confusing if we don't remember that the penis is erect in anatomical position. In terms of anatomy, the shaft of the penis does have an outer layer of skin. The distal portion of the penis is referred to as the head or glands. The glands of the penis is covered with a layer of skin called the prepuce, also known as the foreskin. During the process of circumcision, this prepuce is removed. At the very tip of the glands is where we will find the external urethral orifice through which both urine and semen are expelled. There are many nerves and blood vessels associated with the penis. However, most of the penis contains a specialized type of tissue called erectile tissue. Erectile tissue is very sponge-like and it's composed of connective tissue with blood vessels and smooth muscle. During the process of erection, this sponge-like erectile tissue is going to become engorged or fill with blood. If we look at a cross-section of the penis, we can see that there are three columns of erectile tissue. Two of the columns are called the corpora cavernosa, or cavernosum for singular. These are the largest erectile tissues in the penis, and they're located on the dorsal side of the penis. In the center of the corpora cavernosa, we find central arteries. And these arteries are really important because during the process of erection, they become leaky, allowing the blood to leak into the erectile tissue. On the ventral side of the penis, we find one smaller column of erectile tissue called the corpus spongiosum, which surrounds the penile urethra. Of course, when everyone looks at a cross-section of the penis, we all see the face, right? Eye, eye, mouth. Some people say it looks like Gumby. <laughs> Here are some different visual representations of the penis structure and that erectile tissue. This is a flaccid penis, and this is an erect penis. So in the flaccid penis, when we look at the cross section, you can see the spongy tissue is not filled with blood yet. But when you look at the erect penis, you can see how that spongy tissue is engorged with blood. Notice how the arteries in the center of the corpora cavernosa are enlarged. That's when they become leaky and allow the blood to leak into the erectile tissue. Let's take a closer look at the physiology of erection. Erection is necessary for the process of ejaculation and for reproduction. Erection requires the parasympathetic nervous system, and this is really important because we know our parasympathetic nervous system is our nervous system that we use during rest. So what this means is that if the man is stressed out and under sympathetic response, then erection will be very difficult, right? So it doesn't work when you're stressed. The parasympathetic nervous system releases neurotransmitters that affect those arteries located in the corpora cavernosa. Basically, these neurotransmitters are going to affect the endothelial cells lining those, those blood vessels, and it causes those endothelial cells to release something called nitric oxide. So nitric oxide is a chemical messenger used in the human body. And in this case, the nitric oxide is gonna activate an enzyme called guanylate cyclase. This enzyme is located in the smooth muscle cells around the penile arteries. So what we have here are neurotransmitters affecting endothelial cells. Endothelial cells releasing nitric oxide, which affects the smooth muscle cells of these blood vessels. The guanylate cyclase itself is going to cause the smooth muscle cells to produce something called cyclic GMP or CGMP. CGMP is going to cause the smooth muscles of the arteries to dilate. And this means that the arteries will become bigger. And when the arteries become bigger, they become leakier because it causes those endothelial cells to spread further from each other, 
creating bigger intercellular clefts, allowing the blood to leave the blood vessel and enter into the erectile tissue. This causes the erectile tissue to engorge with blood, stiffening the penis with pressurized blood. Also happening during the process of erection are, is contraction of the skeletal muscles in that pelvic floor. And they're compressing on the root of the penis, which also is aiding in erection. I mentioned all that crazy stuff about cyclic GMP for a reason. So cyclic GMP is needed for erection. Viagra is a drug that helps men to attain erection. And what Viagra does is it prevents the breakdown of cyclic GMP. So there's an enzyme in the male's body that will break down cyclic GMP. But Viagra inhibits that enzyme, allowing the cyclic GMP to have its effect in the male's body.